What's up, friends? We are also broadcasting live and direct from the city of Lima in a radiological center that has been kind enough to offer us its facilities to be able to do the tomography scans and for the world to see inside what these extraordinary tridactyl beings are like. We are in the last stage. If you help us, we can move the stretcher a little so that the public can see. We are here with a tridactyl being called Sebastian, a tridactyl being also, and Santiago, a little boy who is barely five years old. According to what has been calculated, the calculation made by the forensic doctors. So this being called Sebastian, baptized as Sebastian, is extraordinary because he has metal implants. But the great doubt of science has always been that if they are tridactyls, it is because they have been mutilated, because their feet and hands have been sawed off, as they have vilely been, said the scientists who do not study, who have never approached these bodies. So we are with two medical professionals, a forensic expert, an expert in microsurgery, so that they can tell us exactly their diagnosis, and we already have the images that the tomographer has just revealed to us. We are going the other way. We are accompanied by the doctor, the forensic David Ruiz, and the doctor, Ricardo Anikama. Both are experts, one in forensic medicine, and the doctor, Ricardo Anikama, who is here on the left, is one of the most important specialized doctors in head and neck surgeries. We are going to go through here briefly. I hope you understand a little bit. The conditions are a little narrow in the place, but we are the same. Dr. Nikama, very good afternoon. Good afternoon, doctor. Nice to join us. Thanks for the invitation. What is the diagnosis that generates expectations when you see this body from the inside? Well, here where we can see in this reconstruction of the tomography, what catches our attention is the implantation of the external canthus, which is much superior to the internal one. This is an obliquity of more or less 45 degrees, as we can observe in both orbitals. If we have the nose area, it is also a very small nose with small nostrils and practically a flattened nose. When we see the bone structure, if you can place it for me to be able to observe, we see that it has the entire constitution of a very similar skull, very similar to that of a human, including the dentition, the dental roots, the temporomandibular joint, but it catches our attention, a metallic-looking plate that is in the dorsal region of the neck. I don't know if you can do it. We are going to zoom in a little towards the neck because it is an implant that looks like a blessing. It is very thin and wraps around half of the neck. This is very similar to some implants that we have found, as Dr. Jose Salce explained it. Implants on the skin that we have found in other specimens, such as Albert, whose implant generated bone growth around it, something that was determined by the radiologist in Cusco. So what is extraordinary about Sebastian is that he has two implants also at the level of the collarbones. Let's do a contrast so you can see it, doctor. It's there perfectly when we do the reconstruction to give impact to the metal. We can observe two other metal structures in addition to the one in the dorsal region of the neck and which are more or less at the level of both clavicles. This is impressive. What do you think? Yeah, that's definitely something different. It's not common. This is what can be highlighted in this tomography, both at the level of the orbit and the presence of these metals in the neck. Many thanks to Dr. Ricardo Anikama, expert in head and neck surgery. And we go with Dr. David Ruiz, who is a forensic expert. Let's see the controversial part that is the issue of tridactyly. Dr. David Ruiz, I am a plastic surgeon and I am also a forensic doctor with a specialty and also a master's degree in forensic medicine. No, only mastery, that is, are the three years of forensic medicine residency 
And I can tell you that there is not a single piece of evidence of manipulation that could give the signs that this body has been manipulated. That is, they are authentic 100%. There is no evidence of tampering for this era. In other words, we have not manipulated it. And that when one evaluates tridactyly, there are no stumps. There is no stump of a bone having been removed. Can we see the hands or feet of the other specimen, please? Miss the one of Santiago. Because the truth is that the difference between the two bodies, Santiago, there is one that is a difference. Let's call it age. They are almost the same, but in a different state of growth. One from three to five years old and another from the day. Well, about seven to nine, more or less calculating from the human perspective. Not their perspective, because obviously we make our human paradigm. But this tridactyly is authentic and has no signs of having been cut. That is, if you see in this reconstruction, which is through images with technology, there are no signs that there was a step that was missing, and that is, there is none. And the entire articulation is coherent, it is authentic, there is no way it has been made, that is, it has authenticity correlation from the... Interosseous, and also there is no evidence of manipulation. And for the skeptics, let's say, those who think it could have been a post-mortem mutilation, that's also why... What you just told me is ruled out, completely ruled out. That is, the person who is speaking, if he speaks in this way, it means that he does not have use in... He has no idea what human anatomy means, neither pre-mortem nor post-mortem. Any pedestrian can come and look and give their opinion, not simply say that it is a mutilated body, that is another fraud or things of that nature. An opinion of the market, but I mean, I am giving my opinion as an expert in plastic surgery and forensic medicine. And as president of the Peruvian Society of Legal Medicine of Peru, and attesting that those bodies are authentic. And those tomography scans correspond to the bodies that we are seeing there in front. Let's go back to Sebastian's implant, please. The truth is that this part is one of the parts that surprised us because initially we thought that Sebastian's neck had a very strong cervical injury. So we thought that this metal on the back of the neck could be a way to support the body. However, there is no type of hook, let's say, right? That is, the metal is not embedded, nailed, or screwed to anything. Of course, but also remember that at the time of weaving, when the tissue is soft, that is, at the time of the cool, the fresh, the soft tissue supports the metal already when it dries and is desiccated by the diatomaceous earth. That white thing you see on the bodies is not paint. It is, as initially explained, diatomaceous earth, which is a fossilized algae that extracts in an extraordinary way and dries quickly and prevents putrefaction. Another thing that should be surprising is what Dr. Anikama told us, that he has an absence of sternum. Dr. Anikama was also surprised that, of course, he does not see the ribs joining forward towards the sternum. From our human perspective, we hope to always find that, of course, these bodies are not human. The appearance and everything you're seeing, the sternum, right, it is not noticeable. The sternum, for those who do not know the anatomy, is a bone that is in front, which joins their ribs forward in the anterior part and is where they insert. Exactly, even children, those who have small children, a very subtle bone. This is the sternum. We are going to move. We are going to move to the other environment where we are with the bodies because we are going to have an approach to them. One thing, as we have said, scientists can give their opinion from their home, from their cell phone, sitting anywhere and make statements and say that this is false. However, none of them have had the courage, and I tell you from Lima, they have not had the courage like these professionals to be able to approach this investigation and clear up their doubts. 
Because you can bring all the doubts and questions you want. The only way to clear them up is by coming to do science, coming to do research, to take samples like the Mexicans, Russians, French, Japanese are doing. So here we have the bodies. Here is Santiago. Here is Sebastian. And here we have the opinion of doctor. Anikama, once again, please, about, about, for example, this head here, we have seen that it would look human, but you also notice some other characteristic tomography. With the bodies present here, we see that they are skulls, a little more elongated than what is normally seen in the largest tomography of the cranial vault. Regarding the cars, we have seen that it is a child of approximately five years old, according to the mixed dentition that we have found, and that the facial skull of this specimen is the oldest we are going to. Move the stretcher a little so that we can access it to see. I would like colleague Ricardo for you to see this segment as I haven't put on my glasses right now but I have seen them with a magnifying glass here you can see the transverse fingerprints just like on the Maria mummy the fingerprints do not look like those of humans but in the photos they can be seen clearly they are transverse parallel and longitudinal transverse fingerprints of the finger it's a unique thing What catches my attention is the length of the fingers, which is definitely different from what humans can present. They are very elongated fingers, both on the lower limbs. Could you say, doctor, that this body, these feet are very strange, not only because they have three fingers, but because half is almost a sole and the other half is a finger, right? Practically 50%. That's how it is. That proportion is different. It is not human. Right, exactly. And as far as I am concerned, in the part of the head and neck, we see the obliquity of the eyes that is extremely different. More or minus 45 degrees of implantation in relation to the implantation of the external canthus with the internal canthus extremely... Oblique and some very small nostrils, a little wide, even similar to primates. Could you say if we have found DNA from two apes incorporated into Maria's DNA, why couldn't it have a similar ratio? Surely when the paleogenetic sequencing course is carried out, these beings will also surprise us. Well, I think that with this we hope to have covered our part here in Lima. It has been quite a professional technical display and the truth is that we are very satisfied from here to have been able to contribute this. We invite the scientists of the world, the professors, the professionals from different universities to be a little more interested in knowing this. Unfortunately, pay no attention to my colleagues in the press who are following the script of the Ministry of Culture. I don't know what dolls those from the Ministry of Culture are going to invent now to try to compare them with these extraordinary beings. This is a unique finding in history and shows us that we have coexisted with other species that do not correspond to human evolution. Other species that are going to make us change our paradigm. And please just look for the information and you will find it. Thank you very much from here. I don't know if you have any questions. We return the transmission to the city of Los Angeles in California. Joy Mantilla was with you from Lima, Peru.